Oh god. Um, okay, this is What's this happening? is a great nothing. This is what a great treat with coffee. I don't today? know. There's something in there. <laughs> what? This is. <laughs> just don't worry about what it. Was it? Don't worry, I don't know. Don't worry it's something about it, in the Chris. peanut butter mixture. It's. I think it looks There's like. More? No, it looks like chocolate. Hey everyone, I'm Claire. We are in the BA Test Kitchen today and I am making gourmet Reese's. Reese's are the one candy that I still eat as an adult fairly regularly. We'll be taking a lot of these home to put in my freezer because I like to eat them frozen. It's such an assault of sugar that like your my like salivary glands like tingle. It's like what's happening? The milk chocolate and peanut butter I really like. It is extremely sweet. But then you have what I think is truly the secret to why these are so good. It's just that the peanut butter is so salty. Mm. There's a lot of things here I haven't seen before. There's something called the Reese's Big Cup, stuffed with Reese's Pieces candy. It's delightful. It's just that you get texture from the like sugary shell. Fast break, candy bar version with nougat. Incredibly sweet. I think the Reese's that we create can only be the classic cups because that's what I prefer to eat and that to me is like the most iconic. Here's a question that I wanted to kind of answer in this exploratory phase is like, do I have to temper chocolate again? Chocolate that's tempered is chocolate that has been heated and cooled so that when you break it, it stays shiny and snappy and firm. But like these are sitting out at room temperature and look at the bottom, it's so soft. I, yes, I am trying to avoid tempering chocolate, so that is the answer that I want to have. Tempered chocolate, no, right, Chris? I feel like it would be much better with tempered chocolate, but I guess it can't be too thick a layer, right? Right, I think part of the good thing about Reese's is you can bite into it, just like the picture shows, and it breaks cleanly yeah. right where your teeth were, and it doesn't like snap and break off into yeah. shards or anything like that. Do I have to make peanut butter? Please say no. What's the point of making peanut butter? like Smucker's Yeah, natural. Smucker's Natural, my favorite peanut butter in the world. Claire, you got, I mean, you gotta bring something to this. Temper the chocolate, make the peanut butter, maybe like conch your own. I'll make you a deal. I'll temper chocolate if I can start with store-bought peanut butter. Maybe we should just take this whole show to Whole Foods, which is like three blocks away, and just use their, their peanut butter machine. That counts, right? I think you have to make your own peanut butter. Uh, that's not, think... that's the wrong answer. But can I at least use peanut butter as a starting ingredient and not having to make my own peanut butter? I think you're probably gonna have to make your own peanut butter. <sighs> I want a deeper toastiness to the peanuts, mm. right? The texture of the peanut butter. I know, it's gonna like... be a little hard I think. It's just like kind of fluffy. Do you want there to be like a snap when you bite into it or that softer texture? There no. is a right answer. I like the softer texture. Okay, good. <laughs> so well, what you're really needs... saying is I don't have to temper the chocolate. I would not temper the chocolate. Really melty. You know, just all that stuff that non -tempered. dark Non-tempered. Non-tempered, dull as hell. I think enough people agree that it should not be like a snappy break, you know, like um, silent, hard, like yogurt. <laughs> silent. <laughs> I have an idea of how I would make it, which is to fill the cup with chocolate, press a disc of peanut butter down into the chocolate so that it fills out all along the edges and then put a layer on top. I think keeping it milk chocolate is pretty key, but I'm just now thinking about like that filling and how f that like kind of like fluffy texture and how I'm gonna do that. So I need to get like deeper into the construction of the peanut butter cup and also take a closer look at that filling. Let me draw you a little diagram. So I wanna basically figure out proportionate to the size of the cup, how much chocolate and how much peanut butter so that I could scale it to whatever size that we're gonna make three grams. The area of the circle is pi r squared, right? The area of the bottom 1. is 1.7 inches square. This whole thing is kind of stupid because I can't get, <laughs> I can't get tens of grams. This whole idea is, do we have like a crazy sensitive scale? Time for my favorite part and the most informative reading the ingredients. Milk chocolate, sugar, cocoa butter, chocolate, skim milk, milk fat, lactose, lecithin, PGPR, peanuts, sugar, dextrose, salt, TBHQ, and citric acid to maintain freshness. Basically the ingredients are milk, chocolate, peanuts, and sugar. You know, I like the idea of starting from using whole pe peanuts, like using a whole product. Um, 
maybe we'd go over to the computer and maybe see what we can find out about how the filling in particular is made and then how they're built in the factory. Almost two million peanuts. Cups right over vibrating belts to get the peanut butter to spread out. A depositor squirts the final chocolate layer into the cup. A puff of air spreads out the chocolate. That puff of air at the end to spread out the uh, chocolate, we can do that. We can get like a little canned air from like a Staples or something. Today, I want to focus on that peanut disc and just see if I can get something that will hold its shape at room temperature. So I'm gonna have to find some peanuts. I thought about this recipe. It was for a homemade halva. Halva is sort of a Middle Eastern candy made from sesame paste. Basically that recipe was creaming a cooked sugar syrup into sesame paste. And it does create fluffy, firm texture. I'm essentially gonna decrease the amount of sugar and increase the amount of peanut butter because I want it to be less set. Wow, so peanutty. I was sort of afraid of making it too sweet, but I don't think that's really happened. I've never used these before. Rhoda just got them. They are spacers that you put over your rolling pin so that it's raised evenly off the counter so you don't get any thin spots or thick spots. I really just wanna let this set at room temp. Maybe I'll check back in 10 or 15 minutes. And it's a little bit oily on the surface. Not too bad, actually. I want to try cutting, punching out a circle with a cutter. So hopefully it should fit nicely, but also snugly inside the bottom of this um, wrapper. Did you just finish lunch? Do you want to taste this peanut butter stuff? It's a little bit bitter in the way that like tahini is bitter, just from the peanuts. You've already improved it. it I guess the only thing is the thickness and the amount, because I do think there's like a slightly higher ratio than that. This will just be, I think, a good test for like flavor. Mm -hmm. Proportion, I may have to work on. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna use those four tests that I tried and, and put them into cups. If we like this and we get to a point where we get to stop today, I think I can always hold this until we start up again. My filling is setting in the freezer. And the last thing really to do is melt my milk chocolate. Or I'm gonna trim down these paper liners so that they're the same height as the ones for the peanut butter cups. It got hand delivered. It's canned air like you would use to clean out your keyboard. And this is what I'm gonna use to, I'm gonna try, to spread out, I'm gonna dollop the chocolate on the top and use it to kind of, ooh, what do we think that was? Why is it so cold? It always is. But why? Okay, all right, I feel like, no, not so far no liquid. It's all right, okay, let me grab my filling. It's pretty solid, so I should be able to press it down into the melted chocolate. What did I say, eight, um, uh, no, eight grams. I'm gonna tap it on the counter to flatten out the chocolate. Okay, I think that that worked pretty well. Let's do the rest. I no longer can really weigh it, but I can kind of eyeball what I think three grams of chocolate looks like. And then I'm gonna use that canned air to try to flatten it out into a single layer. I'm gonna start pretty gentle. Oh God. <gasps> what is it? I'm so worried about what is the chemical in there that's... Did you get something on it? Yeah, like there's a liquid in here that's, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. First aid treatment, that's not good. It should not come in contact with skin. Oh, treat for frostbite if necessary. This is not a good, should I just like use a straw and blow? But is it, people are not gonna wanna eat my like blown air. The intentional misuse by deliberately inhaling <laughs> contents may be fatal, that's not actually funny. So I'm just gonna get rid of this one. This is, this is no longer food safe. Rhoda had a great idea because I think it's unsafe to use the canned air. She's a heat gun. My favorite tool. From all your food styling. And that's high. Oh no, it, now, I think, <laughs> now I think the chocolate's burning. I love it. Okay. This is used for your glasses? It's for the lens to like blow dust off. Oh, the oh, oh, your, the camera lens. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not really working that well. It's just, I'm thinking. <laughs> it's also kind of, it's also, yeah, the chocolate's starting to set. You look very cool doing it. <laughs> The, the other options are this. I was excited about the air idea. Might not work. But the other options are 
to like go in with a tool. Obviously this isn't the right shape, but something like an offset spatula and just spread it around. Maybe the spoon was the way to go the whole the whole time. You know, besides like the little Dairy Queen swoop in the center, not not the worst finish. So I'm just trying to see if I can get rid of it with this little guy. It's kind of working. The middle one looking really good. The chocolate went matte. A couple things. One, I know that that layer on top is too much chocolate, so that's problem number one. Problem number two, I think that the peanut butter itself just needs to be thicker. It's really intense. Like even a little bit of bitterness from the nuts that actually is balancing it out really well. I would like more peanut butter. I think it's too much chocolate. But I actually really think that the texture of the peanut butter mixture is pretty nice. It tastes good. I think when I try this again, I'm gonna leave the peanut butter mixture the same, but keep it a little bit thicker. And then I wanna try everything with the new assembly method so that it's better in proportion. And then I'll taste it again and I can kind of see if I wanna tweak the peanut mixture after I do that. Couple changes that I wanted to make. A thicker layer of peanut butter. Obviously like the canned air thing, like that was not really successful, but I did have an idea which was using our airbrush machine. You can control the airflow better and it has like a more diffuse kind of like stream of air. So it's gonna really just be kind of like a little work day doing the exact same thing. It's time to get to work. That's very close. Cool. I don't know, Sarah, it looks pretty thin. No, it doesn't. Does it? No, it doesn't. It's fine. Looks great. So this is the airbrush machine that we originally got for the Skittles episode. It's come in very handy. We used it again for snowballs. Oh, do you think it's clogged? That there's... Did you clean it the last time? No. You know, just as important as uh, purchasing tools is maintaining. Uh, my man, just a little disappointed. Are you talking about me? No. And I'm not gonna fill it with any uh, food color or anything. I'm just gonna use the Airstream just to get sort of like a smooth glassy finish on the top of the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. The tapping is more effective than the airbrush machine. Each one of these is kind of a lot of work, but those initial three tests look pretty good. They have a nice smooth top. This is gonna be sort of the one where all the finish will go, and I'll keep it in the fridge, and then I'm gonna just do three at a time in this second pan so that I can tap these around and I'm not disturbing the ones that I've already done. Shouldn't you be, shouldn't you be spending your time tempering chocolate no. and not like messing around with the airbrusher? No, the airbrush is making up for the fact that I'm not tempering the chocolate. I don't know that it is. It doesn't want to be tempered. I feel like we <laughs> want it to be tempered though. No, only you want it to be tempered. A better Reese's cup. I not just a Reese's cup. You want soft chocolate. I do yeah. want soft chocolate. Don't worry, Chris, it's gonna be great. Don't worry. It's the only person who wants the chocolate to be tempered. I'm just gonna continue to ignore that. If I were really determined to make this perfectly smooth, you get the torch out. The torch is good for popping little air bubbles. surface. Oh, did you see that? It popped a bunch of air bubbles. Yeah. Did you oh, get it? Wow. They are much smoother on the surface than they were before. So I'm taking out the ones that have set in the fridge. I just put the second batch back in. These look really good. These two have a little bit of fat bloom on the surface and that's what happens sometimes when you don't temper chocolate. Once they come back up to room temperature, I think maybe they'll hopefully lose some of that. Was Chris Morocco right? No. I'm still not tempering the chocolate. It's just not happening. Should we try this one just to see? Or is it too early? Can I try it? I think good, good clinging to the paper, even maybe a little too much. First impressions, really good chocolate coverage. Nice definition around the sides. This one's been sitting at room temp for a few minutes, so it's, it's definitely soft. Wow. I just want you to look at 
that incredible, incredibly even layer of chocolate on the top and bottom. It's not too sweet, the way that the Reese's is sort of like overwhelmingly sweet. Mm, it's really good. I don't think there's anything that I would really change. I'm just gonna keep going and doing what I was doing the whole time. Just two sets of three, and then that should get me through all the filling. <laughs> okay, I made 14 Reese's peanut butter cups. So, okay, obviously these are bigger, but overall, I'm very happy with, they, with the way that they look, and I know that these are not tempered chocolate. So, despite Chris telling me I was doing it wrong, I still disagree. Oh my God, look at that. Look at how even and uniform the homemade version is compared to the original. I'm actually quite impressed that this turned out so even on the top and bottom layers. Delightful. The texture of the interior mm -hmm. is much nicer than there's like Ooh, more. Thank you. There's more going on. It's not quite as pasty. Like you know how mm. with the Reese's, like you don't really get like any crunchy yeah. nutty thing. Essentially, it's like peanut halva. Yeah. In exactly. the center. Exactly. Exactly. I do think it's like it's an impressively thin layer of chocolate. Yeah. You thank know? you. Like a really nice like ratio. Thank Claire's you. Like, I did math. Uh -huh. I did math to do it. Chocolate's too soft. You did math to do it. Oh, it, it just is too soft. Just don't. don't just zoom out on that one. <laughs> Don't look too close. They're good. Whatever. I disagree Chris, by the Chris chocolate part. Know. Chris doesn't know. Yeah. Just don't remark upon how they're not coming out of the paper cleanly. Oh my god. I like peanuts like that. Mm-hmm. It's like halva. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Don't don't look too close. It's a little bit of a Monet, you know? You know the Monet. I right? wasn't gonna say there's anything wrong with them, but now you're like <laughs> No, just no, that's what I said not to do. Well, just I look for a minute squint a little bit. The release is a little different. Well, the paper's a little different. You know, the flavor is really, really good. And I really like, I, I like actually prefer the inside. Oh my God, you're not just saying that, right? No, I'm not For saying effect. that. I, I, didn't, like, I didn't pay you to say that, no, right? No, no, no. I feel like it's an actual <laughs> improvement on it because the interior of the Reese's is so sickly sweet. Mm -hmm. You enjoying that makes me not upset when I do this stuff. Aww. Said, an, said another way, I hate it less. <laughs> <laughs> Not tempering the chocolate was kind of a shortcut, but I think ultimately, despite Chris, Chris's protests, really did result in something that eats very similar to the original, so that I'm into. I'm very pleased. These are ones that I would take home and try and eat, you know, eat after dinner for like my little sweet treat. Here's how you make gourmet Reese's peanut butter cups. Toast two and a half cups of peanuts in a 350 oven until golden brown, 20 to 25 minutes. Grind in a food processor until a smooth nut butter forms. Measure out one cup peanut butter and transfer to the bowl of a stand mixer. Beat in one and a half teaspoons vanilla extract and three quarter teaspoon kosher salt just until mixed. Bring half cup sugar and three tablespoons water to a boil in a small saucepan until the sugar syrup reaches 248 Fahrenheit. Slowly stream the sugar syrup into the peanut butter and beat just until mixture is cool. Turn out onto a sheet of parchment paper and let cool slightly. Roll out peanut butter mixture into a slab approximately quarter inch thick, cover and let set until cool. Punch out circles to a diameter just smaller than the bottom of a standard muffin liner. Freeze filling until ready to use. Trim ruffled edge of dark muffin liners to the height of Reese's peanut butter cups. Fill each liner with eight grams of melted milk chocolate and place in a muffin pan. Tap to flatten chocolate. Remove peanut butter filling from the freezer and press one into the center of each filled cake liner until the chocolate is pushed up and flush with the top of the peanut butter. Pipe three grams of melted chocolate over top and tap to spread out chocolate. Spread around with a spoon to cover top of peanut butter, then use a tor to heat chocolate and tap pan to even out the surface. Chill until chocolate is set. Repeat with more chocolate, muffin liners, and peanut butter until you run out of filling. Thank you. These are my new shoes. They're my favorite shoes I've ever owned. I love them. Clonks are great because they really, they're good for my natural foot shape, which is square. <laughs> I couldn't be happier that they're in, in fashion. <laughs>